Hi, my name's Pauline Green and I'm president of the International Cooperative Alliance. It's a very real pleasure to get the chance to talk to you at your conference today. I'm just sorry I couldn't be there in person. I am, however, standing in the offices of the International Cooperative and Mutual Insurance Federation and bless them, they've been doing my videos across the international year and made a huge contribution to allow me to be present in conferences all across the world when I wasn't actually there. So just a word of thanks to them for the great contribution they've made to my international year. And I want to take the chance to say to you how much I value everything that our membership across the world and you particularly have done in celebration of the International Year of Cooperatives. And you know, now that we're in 2013, I'm being asked by a lot of people, what did the International Year of Cooperatives mean to the movement? And what impact is it going to have going forward on the cooperative engagement in the global economy? And I want to try and answer both of those questions for you today, and in particular, add another. How can you help to make this cooperative decade that we're now in a success? So let's start with what the International Year of Cooperatives meant to the movement. Well, as the president, I was able uh, and very privileged to spend uh, cooperative events all around the world in 35 countries last year. And what I saw and what I know has happened as a result of the International Year is that the movement across the world has never in its 175 year history been as cohesive, been as confident, been as enthusiastic about its common shared identity as it is today. And that springs from the fact that we were given by the United Nations not just the very rich gift of an international year, but we were given a slogan Cooperative enterprises build a better world. And we were given a logo. And those things encapsulated what the ICA really wanted its membership to do. We wanted you to show that logo and slogan all across the world in every way possible. And we've seen it. We've seen it on invoices, on brochures, on posters, on, on distribution trucks, uh, on every possible way, on the web, uh, on everything that you can think of, shopping bags in Finland and, uh, and, and invoices in the UK. So on and on, we've seen that slogan appear. And at a stroke, that has lifted our visibility across the world. And then people have also grown in confidence because they've learnt from the information we've published about the size and the strength of our global movement. It is true that the cooperative movement is already playing a huge part in the global economy. Our figures from 2010 demonstrate that despite the financial collapse, despite what's happening in so many parts of the developed world in particular, the cooperative movement has continued to grow. First and foremost, the turnover of the largest 300 cooperatives in the world, many of them in the United States, is actually worth just under 2 trillion US dollars. On top of that, the movement together across the world is owned by over a billion people and we employ about a hundred million people. We are talking about a very substantial business sector. So altogether that message has grown around the world and the movement, no matter how small and no matter what a sm the size of the country, the movement has come to see what together we represent around the world and that's given them a huge boost in confidence uh, and it's reinvigorated their sense of the value of cooperative enterprise. So there is a desire for more in the cooperative movement. There's a desire to see us go on to build the cooperative family of businesses across the world. So there's been a huge impact on the cooperative movement itself in terms of its own self-confidence, its own cohesion uh, and its own visibility. And what about our impact going forward? What do we do now? The international year's finished, but it was only the beginning. It was ever only designed to be the beginning, the beginning of this cooperative decade. Because not only did we have the international year in 2012, but we were able to demonstrate in that year that certain sectors of our business had really grown across the five, four or five years of the financial collapse. If you look at our cooperative banking sector and our cooperative insurance sector, 
They have continued to grow and the figures are staggering. Uh, you will be able to see in the World Cooperative Monitor, which was published in October last year by the International Cooperative Alliance, the size of our cooperative uh, financial sector and how it's grown. And you will be able to see that on the back of that, we have been able to say, bank with cooperative banks, insure with in cooperative and mutual insurers, because these are the secure, stable ones in this world of financial turbulence. So we've had an added bonus from our own sectors, which have continued to grow. As recession has hit large parts of the United States, Europe, uh, Japan, we've seen our cooperative movement in other fields. The consumer movement has continued to grow. In Spain, which has been devastated by its national size of its national debt and its borrowings now from the IMF and the European Union, we see the consumer movement in that Mediterranean arc on the coast of, of Spain, we see it continue slowly, cautiously to grow and to invest in its environmental uh, traditions, uh, which has seen a greater growth in its sales. So we're not only growing, we're growing on our core strengths, advertising our sustainability, not just in environmental terms, but in the longevity of our business, in our business relationships, in uh, the business ethics we promote, these things show us to be different from the prevailing traditional corporate sector which has failed so badly. In consumer co-ops, we're showing uh, that we're a different sort of business. In housing, we're still there. We're offering more homes to people who've lost their homes in this collapse. And we're continuing to grow and to advertise our cooperative difference, the way in which we run our cooperative housing. In agriculture, we see huge changes in the agriculture around the world, but a greater demand for more and more cooperative energy. So there is something that's still needed and something that we can still do. And that's what 2013 is about. We adopted a blueprint for a cooperative decade in Manchester. That blueprint is based on five key themes. First and foremost, participation. We are the most participatory form of business in the world. And we have to make sure that we don't rest on our laurels. We have to grow and energize our membership out there to engage more with us. And there's more. If we want to bring young people into our structures, if we want to really maximize our engagement with the external world, we have to start pushing out our discussions on the social media, on networking across the IT systems. We have to start making ordinary members of the public engage in some of the discussions we're having about our cooperative difference. At the same time, of course, we have to retain the membership's right to decide on issues. But why not say to the wider public, this is how we operate, we're thinking of changing to this or that, and engage them in that discussion. Let's open up our participation to wider audiences. As I say, preserving our right as members to decide, and not damaging or demeaning our membership role, but always having a view to engaging as many people as we can. So we want to, to use new technology, to use the way particularly the young are constantly uh, engaged via social media and networking, to engage them in our movement. We, the young, young people involved in the Occupy movement wanted an impact, they wanted a voice, they wanted to, to have an engagement in a fairer economic system. We can give them that. And it's our role to open up to them. So we want to build on our participatory systems, uh, which are already well established. The second key theme is our sustainability. And when we talk about sustainability, we're not just talking about climate change and, and the environment and sustaining the future of the planet, important as that is. We're talking about sustainability in a much more holistic way. We're talking about it as relationships between, uh, between people, labor relations, business ethics, good governance, community engagement, making sure that we're building a world that has democracy embedded in it so that we can uh, make sure that the world is, rids itself of despots and tyrants. These are all about the sustainability of our model because we engage in all those areas. So we need to redefine the way in which people look at business efficiency. Business efficiency has become almost synonymous with
profitability. We have to change that. We have to say, actually, efficiency is about something much bigger, much better balanced than simply, the, 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 if you like, the, the red-necked approach for a, a profitability. We have to make sure that our sustainability model is built on a much better balance of all those features of sustainability and not just um, profitability. So we want to make sure the co-op movement is seen as the business model that cares for the wider aspects of sustainability and to build in a better balance uh, in that model of efficiency. And that's down to all of us in our businesses to do that. The third key theme is our identity. And, and I think there's two aspects to this. One is how we perceive ourselves within the movement. What are the key features uh, of our internal message about who we are? But secondly, how do we project that outwards? Because we know that most people will understand the cooperative as, as a model of business. They won't understand uh, the detail that we, as those involved, engaged and committed to the movement, need to know. So we have to preserve the principles on which our movement is projected. That's what we need to do as a movement. We need to be true to it. We need to talk, walk the talk of our principles because just one failure will damage all of us. So to get the principles fully embedded, fully engaged in management, uh, uh, through the ambassadors of our members out on the ground is a key issue. But then to project the key difference of the cooperative message and the decade, the cooperative decade that we're living in is something that we all need to do as well. And one of the things the International Cooperative Alliance is doing is looking to see how we can develop a mark that will take the, the strand, the, the, the trend of the international year, the colours maybe or, or, or the slogan, take that and develop it into a cooperative decade message uh, until 2020. And we'll be doing that and, and revealing it at the, at the Cape Town conference, which you can see advertised uh, behind me, that will take place in November this year. It's a general assembly, first one in Africa. We hope that you'll come and we hope that you'll share in the excitement of the, the development of the blueprint for a cooperative decade that will be revealed there and the new identity mark that we hope will, members will absorb and use just like they use the international year one. The fourth element that we need to look at, the fourth and fifth, which are legal frameworks and capital, are both key themes to make sure our business model can thrive. And on legal framework, we know there are still areas where legislation is not good enough. I was privileged to be in the White House at the seminar that was run by the Obama administration um, in the international year. And to see the way in which key officials of the Obama administration recognised the strengths of some of the ideas coming from those great cooperators who were present. Uh, and they promised to take some of those forward. I know on housing there's been some issues developed and I hope that there will be more going forward. So we've got a lot of work to do across the world to make sure that wherever you can make a business case for the cooperative model of business, there is no legal impediment to us being able to take that forward. And in the moment that exists in my own country, you can't have a bank incorporated as a co-op. It's just an accident of history, but we need to change it. And that sort of thing has happened all over the world. So we've got to get the legal framework right. It has to be empowering. It has to be uh, uh, allowing us to engage as a valued part of our national and the global economy. On capital, we all know that Cooperatives, because they don't raise money on the stock market, are much more sustainable, are much more uh, able uh, to be uh, in being directed by their members to be sustainable in terms of the policies they have on investment and on, on profitability, for instance. But it does mean in a modern corporate environment, cooperatives sometimes struggle for development capital. We rely on our members' funds, we rely on borrowings. But we need sometimes to have another vehicle that will help us to grow uh, and scale up. And we believe there has to be a way in which, uh, in this world, in which we can find new ways of development capital that once again do not damage our ownership model because we cannot in any way put that at risk. And so we're looking to see where those ideas can come from. There is already a lot about, a lot being done. We've got to secure that approach for our movement going forward. So those are the five themes. It's participation, it's sustainability, identity, 
legal framework and capital. And that's where the decade has to concentrate if we're going to, to have a confident, enthusiastic, committed co-op movement developing across the world and becoming a much more powerful uh, model uh, in the global economy. What can you do so much? Because all of that I've just described will not be done by the ICA. We can help, we can promote, we can drive it, we can suggest ways of moving, we can work with the global institutions to lobby for it. You have to do it on the ground. Your businesses must walk the talk. Your businesses must protect our member-owned business model and you must go out there and proselytise for it. You've got to be the ones who are telling people about this cooperative model of business. How about cooperative uh, nursery schools for children or kindergartens? How about cooperative, uh, mutual, mutually owned community and individual care of the older people? How about cooperative housing developed for people who are without homes? And let's get new cooperative businesses going in the social services, in the health sector. These are the things that you must drive on the ground as cooperative ambassadors. This decade can succeed, but it can only succeed if you drive it. This blue blueprint for a cooperative decade, when it was adopted, it wasn't adopted as the strategy for the ICA. It was adopted, adopted for the movement. I know from everything that happened in the United States over the last year that there is an enthusiasm for taking forward our model of business. Because we believe, and I'm sure you believe, that this is our moment. And we're being told by key Nobel economists uh, and by other key players in the economy and in the political world that the time has come for the cooperative movement to show just what it can do as a people-owned and people-centred model of business in this world. We believe in democracy for pol pol politics. Why not in business too? Why not show what a democratic member-owned business model can do? And that's why we need your advocacy on the ground. You deciding as a movement across the United States and in your own uh, sectoral groupings how you're going to take the blueprint forward. In the next few months here in the United Kingdom, there'll be a meeting of key cooperative businesses to see how they will drive uh, the co-op decade forward. Just talking to the chief executive of ICMIF, the Insurance Federation here, he's talking about how the insurance and mutual sector are going to be meeting to drive the blueprint forward. The question is, what are you going to do?